Hey everyone, Tamara here, your host. Happy Friday. You can probably sense the smile on my face because I'm about to bring you a delightful, surprising, insightful conversation to this podcast. I mean, the value bombs and the aha moments that are dropped will shock you. Why? because it comes from a 12 year old. All right, here's what happened. As you know, I don't often bring my kiddos into my work. Their, their life is their life. So I only bring them in when they allow me. And then, yeah, they travel with me. And yeah, like, you know, I talk to them about stuff, but in terms of being public, but lately I've been having these fascinating conversations with them. And this morning I started up a conversation with my 12 year old Ari and I asked him, I said, Hey, what do you think it takes to go all out in something and why don't more people do it? And we started down this path and ah, I wish I'd hit record earlier because he was dropping value bombs the moment his mouth opened. But then I hit record and I asked him, hey, what's the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy mind? And as we say in our house, when one of us goes off on a tangent, you got me monologuing. Well, he monologued for 10 minutes I, and I'm going to bring this to you because he talks about the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy mind. He talks about turning the unhealthy mind into a mood that you can get out of. He goes down the path of pointing out how our school systems in this country don't actually support a healthy mind. He talks about what it takes to give it your all and why sometimes people get stuck and, and the power of focus and the difference of how it feels. Now, it's all done in the 12 year old's viewpoint of talking about social studies and tests and whatever. But man, whether you are a business owner, an intrapreneur inside an organization, a leader, an emerging leader, an athlete, a student, a teacher, uh, a, a you know gig economy worker, whatever you are, I know that you're going to get a ton of value out of the next 10 ish minutes. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to edit this. This is Ari monologuing as he would say and this is what i caught on audio but it's so good that i couldn't not share it with you i just couldn't hold it and i got his permission because i won't do that to my kiddos i totally got his permission to share this with you he's like sure emo whatever so i hope you really i hope you enjoy this one I, i've got no follow-up actions for you to do i've got uh, you know, go to our website and engage in all our tools to help you get to that healthy mindset. Of course, please go do that. All our different podcasts, our IQE, our innovation assessment that tells you your strength of innovation, which by the way, supports that healthy mindset. Join our academy, which is the ongoing support and tools, which I think as Ari said, right? Like he talks about being in an unhealthy mood and getting yourself out of it. The academy helps our people do that. That's why we're there. All right. I hope you enjoy this one. And Hey, if you know someone that needs to hear this, share the podcast with them, forward it on to them, let them hear the monologuing wisdom that happens. Ah, so incredible. Here we go. Okay, so you want me to talk about healthy and unhealthy mindsets? Yeah, like what's the difference? What's a healthy, what's a healthy mindset? Okay, um... So a healthy mindset, I think, let's say you go all out for an exam or something and you fail. You don't do that well. Well, I'm not saying you fail. You don't get a good grade. You don't get past the grade or the grade you wanted. Let's say you get a C, you wanted B, maybe you got B, you wanted an A, or really anything. But if you don't get what you want, something below that, I think the healthy mindset would be, okay, I screwed up, I can fix this, I just need to know what I can improve on. And that is the constant, actually I'm going to turn on the corner real quickly, that's the constant mindset schools are pushing you towards, and yet they don't do anything to actually make it happen. They just throw stuff at you and say if you did bad, oh well, it sucks to suck, really. Mm -hmm. And they don't help you improve on your work or anything, they go on to the next subject, and say, okay, this is what you're learning now. If you're bad at it, okay, you're going to get a bad grade. If you're good at it, you're going to get a good grade. But but you're saying the healthy mindset is not that. Yeah, it is the exact opposite. It's, okay, I failed on this. I'm going to keep learning it once I feel comfortable with it. Once I feel that I have it down and in my head, I'm going to keep 
I'm going to go on to the next and keep working from there. And the cycle can happen over and over. It's the cycle of, well, fail. It's, yeah, it's the cycle of fail and thinking, okay, done. I'll just keep working on this until I feel comfortable. And the unhealthy mindset would be, oh, okay, I failed. I give up. I shouldn't be doing this. I really shouldn't be doing this, actually. I'm so dumb. And that's, again, what the school is actually making you think. Because they're saying, okay, you're bad at this. You're not going to do well. And so what I think you should do to actually get out of that out of what unhealthy mindset an unhealthy mindset okay. yes is it isn't this long complicated process it's just trying to fix some of your work and trying to uh to really reset yourself okay i did bad on this i haven't really tried this before but i'm going to try to fix my work i'm going to see what i did wrong i'm going to work on that and I'm not just talking about, like, math or English language arts. It can be just about anything. It can be about social studies, science. I know I had a science test that I did horribly on, and I tried to fix it. I didn't do well the second time, but I got, at least I got to an average grade. An average grade. So you did, you felt like you did better the second time. You improved. I felt like I did better, I did do better the second time. And I felt better the second time knowing that I knew what I did wrong and how I could fix it. And the problem with it, and to get out of, as I said, to get out of the unhealthy mindset, you just gotta, you gotta push yourself, really. You can't wait for something to come to you to fix you. You have to uh, go to it. You have to fix yourself. And honestly, once you do that and you look around, you look at yourself, you think, okay, I feel so much more successful. And I did it in, I think it was sixth grade. I had, yeah, the, it wasn't the science test, but I was in that mood of, okay, I'm bad at this. I just shouldn't do it again. And then I realized, okay, if I just try it again, it's going to be so much more successful. Do you think that the unhealthy mindset that you were talking about, like I'm bad at this, and you said it was a mood, like you had a mood where you felt like you had an unhealthy mindset? Yes. Do you think that people can turn like a fixed mindset into a mood that they can get out of instead of like staying like always stuck like that. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I think in life, some people are always fixed and unhealthy. They seem to be that way. Like they're stuck in that unhealthy mindset and other people that I know like you are always in the healthy mindset. Right. But you just called it a mood. So I guess I'm wondering, can we train people to get out of the unhealthy mindset and into a healthy? You can. Um, Let's say you helped me out with this once or twice, actually, with some stuff. I was, (laughs) uh, oh, oh, yay! I'm, I'm. I'm Are you giving your mother credit? (laughs) (laughs) What, what was it? Sorry. Okay, you did help me doing that. Whenever there's something that, like a new thing that I was failing at, you would push me to end up doing it. For example, archery. Now, well, I really love it. Yeah, Um, you had a hard time in the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and the way to really train out of it would be, if you can't push yourself, it is perfectly okay to ask for help. Mm. And, yeah, it's perfectly okay to ask for help. If you need help, say, okay, I need help, who can I turn to? And just don't, the only thing about that is don't turn to anyone toxic, and we'll probably talk about it later. We'll tackle that subject another time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, Just don't turn to anybody toxic and you know will try to make you worse. And, yeah. I got one last question before you before I got to send you out the door to school. Okay. Why do you think it feels good to give it your all? I think giving it... (laughs) Sorry. Giving it your all makes uh, makes you feel better. Knowing that you did what you could do and that if you still don't think you did good enough or you don't think that you're going to and that you're satisfied with the grade, if you don't think you're satisfied with the grade, you know, okay, what do I, let's, I'll find myself an example. I'll get somebody with a uh, higher grade. I won't copy off them, but I'll ask them for help. What do they do? 
how do they do it um what are some what are some ideas that you could apply to your own work and and that's really it i mean why do you think people get stuck in doing mediocre work and not putting their best effort into it whether that's school or sports or life whatever i think it's because there's some points in life where they're like okay i just don't care about this anymore it's not gonna help me in the future i mean if i'm being honest you can have a perfectly healthy mindset and know okay knowing about this won't help me in the future like (laughs) I'm sorry, but when am I going to need to know who Mansa Musa is in the future if I'm not... Well, I don't even know who that is, so... <laughs> you don't know who Mansa Musa is? No, who's that? He went on some sort of, like, a spiritual road trip and oh. uh, crashed economies. He was rich. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe that's valuable. Jeff, Be- e- 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 Jeff Bezos was a child to him. <laughs> well, maybe... I don't know. Maybe that tells us something later. I don't know. Do you think... <laughs> Why, what do you think it takes to give it your all? Like, if you were to describe what that really actually looks like in the moment, what does that look like for you? Uh, quickly. How much time do we have? Before? We have, like, three minutes. I leave at 7.55, Emma. All right, we have ten minutes. All right. Yeah, we have a while. Um, giving it your all really means packing down on something and focusing. Uh-huh. And not getting distracted. And that can be hard. Um, because really when you quiet down yourself and you focus on one thing and your body shuts down, except, except, well, let's say it's a language arts test. You have to write down an essay and you're only focusing on your hands and your head, hands and mind, Uh what words are coming out, how to spell them, Uh grammar, Uh checking your grammar and the seconds after not even the seconds, the milliseconds after you write down a word. And when you focus on that, you start to notice so many things around you. Like birds chirping, people walking around, you know, our dog Zoe's toes clicking. (laughs) Her nails were super long. They're not long anymore, luckily. Um, You notice all the small sounds that start to distract you because you barely heard them at all. Before, yeah. yeah. You're so focused on one foot in front of the other that you don't you don't really focus on what's around you. And once you do, it's it's hard to focus. So what I would actually suggest doing is there is I can't remember the name, but just go to Apple Music, Google Play, look up some relaxing songs. If you have a Jonah, a song that you think helps focus you, whether that's rock or I don't know how. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. I I don't know how rock would. I listen to, like, classical type music. Yeah. Um, listen to whatever makes you fall asleep if you listen to music at night. Or, uh, you do this too, Ema. You have Netflix in the background. Yeah, I like the chatter. Yeah. It actually helps me focus. It's, it's a sound that you're used to. Yeah. So that it doesn't, you don't hear all these small. Little things. And it's funny because I'm not even paying attention to the show. I just like yeah. the chatter in the background. It's, I like the energy of the chatter. It's like yeah. being at a cafe without having to be at a cafe. Yeah. It's, I do that sometimes whenever I study. I'll just put like disenchantment in the background and, uh, and start working. And it works out really well. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Any other valuable life lessons I need to know this morning? No, you want to know <laughs> tomorrow as soon as I wake up? Yep. Wake up, Ari. Say something. <laughs> I love you. I'll put it on the internet hey, for money. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too.